This program on armillaria root disease is one of a series prepared by the Protection Branch to help forest workers detect and identify tree diseases in British Columbia. According to recent Canadian Forestry Service estimates, tree diseases, including wood decay in living trees, are one of the largest single sources of wood losses. Armillaria root disease in interior British Columbia is a serious management problem, which typically occurs in areas containing several different tree species and in stands with damage from other diseases and insects. In this program, armillaria damage and features will be highlighted by arrows or circles. Successful control of root disease begins with the recognition of tree damage during day-to-day -day forest work. The undertaking of more specific or detailed root disease surveys when required and where appropriate prescribing stand or site treatments to control the disease. Armillaria root disease is caused by the fungus Armillaria astoyae. Generally the first step to identify the disease is to examine the base of trees which show symptoms of armillaria. Roots and stems show distinctive layers of white mycelium of the fungus in and under the bark. In autumn, the fungus often produces mushrooms in clumps at the base of infected trees. Another distinctive feature of armillaria is its rhizomorph, a root-like structure found on or near infected tree roots. Armillaria root disease is also associated with other root diseases and fungi which have to be identified. Armillaria attacks most tree species, including hardwoods. The fungus is widely distributed throughout the province. Young trees in coastal stands are attacked and killed up to age 15 or so, but not at an older age. However, in interior British Columbia, the disease continues to kill even older trees. Root disease in young forests begins with the fungus, which persists for several decades in old stumps and in large underground roots. When roots of young trees contact infected stumps or roots, the fungus grows on the root, penetrates into the tree bark, and kills the underlying tissues. Rhizomorphs produced by the fungus can only grow a few centimeters through soil to attack other living roots. Once a root is infected, the fungus grows along the root at a rate of 10 to 20 centimeters per year. As the roots are killed, the infected tree begins to show reduced growth of its terminal leader. Usually, by the time the infected tree shows pronounced symptoms of disease in the crown, 75% or more of the roots have been killed. As more and more of the roots are killed, the infected tree shows more pronounced symptoms of disease, such as yellowing of the needles, called chlorosis. Trees which show severe symptoms of root disease usually die within a few years. When infected, the trees often react by producing a flow of resin, attempting to pitch out the disease. This is a good indication of the presence of armillaria root disease. When the tree trunk is completely girdled by the fungus, the tree dies. Older trees, especially in coastal areas, and some species such as pines, western larch, and western red cedar in interior areas, usually survive attack by the fungus. These surviving trees can heal or callus over the armillaria lesions, but the fungus lives internally as a heart rot in the damaged tree. If a surviving tree colonized by armillaria is cut, or weakened by other agents, such as insects, the fungus can rapidly spread throughout the roots and stump. Most armillaria root disease occurs in more or less definite circular patches or infection centers around old infected stumps, and these centers enlarge by root-to-root -root spread of the fungus. 
Microscopic spores produced by the mushrooms do not appear to be important in establishing new disease centers. However, armillaria spores may be able to colonize heartwood exposed in deep wounds on living trees. Root disease centers, which vary in size from one tree to an area of several hectares or more, are indicated by dead trees, some standing and some fallen. Because armillaria attacks the outer wood of roots, trees killed by it usually remain standing for five to ten years or more. These dead trees frequently break off at three to four meters above the ground. Other nearby living trees in a root disease center may show symptoms of root disease. In each center, one or two symptomatic trees should be examined for the distinctive white mycelium of the fungus growing in and under the bark. On dry sites, infection centers may be an opening with few trees or have an understory of susceptible and other tree species. On moist sites, centers usually will have brush and other ground vegetation. With time, several centers often merge and form large centers of one or two hectares or more. Surveys specifically for root diseases are undertaken when more information is required for management purposes. First, the area should be inspected to verify the root disease and judge if root disease is extensive enough to warrant a survey. If the preliminary inspection reveals substantial root disease, lines are run systematically over the area using the access road for a baseline. For each center encountered on the line, the distance across the center from healthy tree to healthy tree is measured and the total amount of infection on all the lines is indicated as a percentage of the total length. Remember that this method underestimates infection damage because in each center the fungus can grow up to five meters ahead of trees exhibiting symptoms. This means that twice as many trees as the number showing symptoms may be infected. During any survey, Frequent checks of symptomatic trees should be made for signs of the fungus. One of the best opportunities to control armillaria is soon after harvesting, but pre-harvest evaluation is essential. Although it is possible to find evidence of root disease in recently harvested areas, surveys are much more efficient and effective if conducted before harvesting operations. The number, size, and location of infection centers will determine the strategy for treatment. If there are few large infection centers, they can be marked to direct future planning crews or guide machine operators during stump removal. Sometimes only a part of a cut block is infected and can be dealt with, but usually the whole block is treated. Planting more resistant tree species is one of the best options. On some interior sites, it is feasible to use seed trees to establish a stand of more resistant species, such as western larch. Within or near infection centers, young planted trees of more resistant species, such as western larch, can be attacked by armillaria, especially if tree roots were deformed because of improper planting technique. But by age 40, these species are usually very resistant to killing by root disease. In spacing young infected stands, tree species that are less often damaged by root disease within five meters distance of disease killed trees should be selected and kept. Young trees, such as Douglas fir, might be common and appear healthy in an infection center, but they probably will die eventually. On some interior sites, where all tree species, including even those more resistant, such as western red cedar, are attacked by armillaria, 
Mechanical removal of infected stumps from the good quality sites is one treatment option. Sites must be examined carefully both before and after harvesting to ensure that the soil is suitable for the operation of heavy machinery. Stump removal operations on each site must be closely monitored to avoid wet areas and wet weather. Roots three centimeters diameter and larger must be removed from the soil. Smaller roots should decay before roots of young seedlings contact them. Although infected stumps and roots do not have to be burned to kill the fungus, burning might be desirable to prepare the site for planting. Recent results from 12 to 15 year old destumping trials have indicated less than 1% tree kill by disease in treated areas, as compared to 5% or more trees killed in similar non-treated areas. With further research and development, Improved stump extraction or chemical fumigation may become feasible for forestry operations. More details on site prescriptions for armillaria root disease are available in the Protection Branch Forest Pest Management Manual. The branch acknowledges the cooperation of these agencies, which provided information and illustrations for this program. For further information about armillaria and other tree diseases, contact protection personnel at the district, regional, or branch offices of the Ministry of Forests.